colleagues, can we bring the meeting to order, please? Um, welcome to the meeting of the Little City Region Combined Authority, and I'd like to inform everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live um, via webcast and available for subsequent viewing. By entering this room, you're consenting to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for filming purposes. Can members and officers please ensure that you press the microphone before speaking and turn it off please afterwards. And finally, can everyone ensure that their phone is switched to silent. Um, items 6, 7, 10 and 11 contain exempt appendices due to the information related to financial or business affairs of a person and therefore if we wish to discuss the content of these appendices, Jill will guide us through what we need to do at that time. Um, just before we go to apologies for absence, um, I think Paul, it's your first meeting at the Command Authority, so welcome Paul Corcoran is standing in for Asif Hamid, um, who's his deputy. Do you just want to address the, the meeting? Yeah, thank you so much, Steve. Um, I'm Paul Corcoran. I'm the CEO of Agent, which is a brand communications agency based here in the city region. I'm vice chair of the Local Enterprise Partnership. And thank you so much for inviting me today to represent our business community. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, item one is apologies for absence, Charles. Yes, Chair, we've had apologies for absence from Councillor Graham Morgan, Councillors Ian Mayer, Asif Hammond, Gideon Ben Tobin, and Barbara Spicer. Any further apologies? Nothing. Councillor Liam Robinson. Indeed, of course. Um, enjoyed himself in sunny climes. Um, two is uh, declarations of interest. Three are the minutes of the previous meeting which were held on the 26th of July 2019. They're on pages 1 to 12. Can I ask if they're agreed, please? Agreed. Item four. Um, is some updates and we have quite a substantial agenda today so I'll try not to take up too much time um, on these issues but it would be wrong not to reflect on what's happening um, with national politics at the moment and it's fair to say that it's been another week of chaos in Westminster. The stalemate over Brexit continues and the threat of a damaging no deal outcome still hangs over us. But Whilst London has been gridlocked, we've been getting on with the job of delivering for the people we represent and we're investing £172 million in public and uh, sustainable transport initiatives. We've rolled out the most generous apprenticeship travel scheme in the country um, and more on that in a second. We're future-proofing our town centres and there's been some announcements today on that and we're investing a further £18 million to improve facilities at some of our local colleges and training providers and that's just to touch the surface of what we do. Uh, I think looking at our record um, we could draw the clear conclusion <coughs> that what we need to do is to be less reliant on London and what they're doing um, and take more control over what we want to do in our own city and region. Um, I'd rather have any decisions, I'm sure everybody here would rather have any decisions taken more locally than um, white old mandarins deciding on our fate. And just on that apprentice travel card, uh, on Monday we rolled the card out to train services across the Liverpool city region. It means now that local apprentices aged 18 to 24, but also the 60s to 18s can get the my ticket, but 18 to 24s are now eligible to get half price travel on rail as well as the benefit they get from the half price bus travel that we announced some time ago and the scheme um, which has been held up as a national exemplar it has to be said by the TUC um, and their report recently means that young apprentices will be able to save £680 a year and it will help remove one of the main barriers of entry to young pe people, certainly in <coughs> working class communities um, who if they're in one of those peripatetic type um, occupational areas, they might be in one place one week and a, a different place the next day and all that sort of stuff. And this really will help them. A brief update, if I can, on a positive meeting with the RMT General Secretary and local representatives last week. 
I, I was genuinely pleased that the first three, three days of planned industrial action on the Mersey Rail network were suspended um, following those efforts uh, to reach a final resolution to this very long running dispute. But hopefully, um, if you forgive the pun, we are back on track and we hope to get a resolution. And everybody accepts, and certainly the politicians in this room and, and those uh, who aren't, who are the leaders, uh, but aren't here today, they know this dispute hasn't been straightforward. And I've said throughout that I'll do everything that I can to try and broker a deal that's in the best interest of the workers, of the people that they're representing through the unions, but also of the taxpayers and the passengers of the Liverpool City region. Um, any deal that we do will not be without cost. This week marks one year since we launched uh, the Zero Suicide Alliance in the Liverpool City region. Some of you might recall said at the time that the Alliance's main aim was to make our city region the most active suicide prevention area in the country and the need for action couldn't be clearer with 6,500 people dying by suicide in the UK in the last year alone. Um, I held a strategic roundtable discussion with some major local businesses this week to talk about our next steps and how we can roll out the training to even more employers in our region to flag up issues early so that employers then can help their own workforces and this is particularly timely as next year Liverpool will play host to the World Suicide Prevention Summit. Yesterday, the uh, what's called the reference panel, who will submit the creation of our fair employment charter, met for the first time. So it was a, um, a it's taken again some time for this to happen, but it's really good that those people were around the room. Um, some 19,000 local workers are trapped on zero service and uh, uh, zero hours contracts, and 330,000 people in our city region are in poverty despite them being in work and the need for the charter couldn't be clearer. The team have now assembled a wealth of experience uh, which is necessary to make what we're trying to do a success. I'm sure everyone enjoyed me and wishing the best of luck to everybody as this vital piece of work uh, begins. Item 5 then is uh, the Command Authority Finance Report um, and John is going to take us through this all briefly. Thank you. Um, just, this is presented for the sake of transparency. Um, it's just an update on quarter one performance against the budget. As you'd expect, in quarter one, it's broadly in line with the budget that um, you agreed in, uh, the combined authority agreed in February. Certain spend, particularly on tidal and energy, was carried forward into this year after the budget had been set. Um, so there is a recommendation in this report to um, to bring that money forward and recognise it in this year's budget. Other than that, the report is, uh, is to note. If, if there are any questions on the report, I'd be happy to, to, to try to answer them. Any questions for John? No? Okay, can we uh, agree the recommendation to set up a page 13 of the report, please? Six is the uh, a report which seeks approval to commit further funding to support the acquisition of up to two new Mersey ferries to cross the Mersey. Um, Pat, uh, you're going to take us through the um, first stage of this report. But, but, thanks, Chair. Uh, delighted to welcome this paper. The Mersey ferries, of course, are an iconic part of our identity. Renewing them will improve our transport infrastructure, strengthen our tourist economy and help reduce carbon emissions from the city region. Uh, what a great day out for locals uh, going past the new cruise uh, line of facilities, seeing all the great cruise liners coming in over the next number of years, and, and particularly as, as that improves. Going over to Eureka, funded by this uh, authority, uh, the Science Museum over in, over in Seacombe, and also a flood side of the new market there. It, it's, uh, it, it's absolutely fantastic news, uh, Chair, and will make a big, big difference as it takes to the tourist trade here uh, on Merseyside. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Pat. Um, Mark, do you have any further comments? Thanks, Chair. I'd just like to add a short technical note, if I can, please. You'll note that the 
project has a very, very compelling strategic case, uh, but only scores averagely under the traditional transport appraisal guidelines. I'd like to provide a statement from the CIF external panel uh, that supports the project's continuation. From a very noted uh, economist, as it happens. <laughs> Given that the ferries are seen as much a part of the global image of Liverpool as are the Alder Dock, the Cavern, etc., then the existence of the ferry service cannot be captured uh, has a major, uh, has a major uh, monetary value which cannot be captured in terms of the guidelines we are working to in the traditional transport appraisal. This value is the intrinsic existence value of the ferries as part of the Liverpool image and brand. Thank you. I think we all agree that they are absolutely iconic, a part of <coughs> what we are. Um, so it's fantastic um, that they now hopefully will happen. But we're, we're um, getting the approval today to support their acquisition. Um, are there any questions, uh, anybody? No? Okay, then can we agree the recommendations to set out on page 29, please? Um, SIF is item 7, and again, uh, Councillor Hackett is going to provide us with the quarterly updates on the strategic investment fund. Thanks, Chair. Uh, this paper is a regular update to members. I'm pleased we can increase the round 2 Call from 60 million to 90 million. This responds to the high demand for projects that can contribute to our region's inclusive economic growth history. I'm also pleased to see good progress in skills capital funding and transport. I encourage the, the, the team, I have encouraged the team, should I say, to bring forward these projects as soon as practical because our residents share deserve the best possible skills opportunities and public transport. Now, are there any questions for Pat or for the team? Uh, now, can we therefore agree the recommendations to set out on page 83 of the report, please? Item 8 is the 2020 International Business Festival, and people will know that as part of the devolution agreement um, that was negotiated um, in 20, November 2015, um, we had the requirement for an international business festival of 2016, 2018, and this one is for a business festival in 2020. Um, Councillor Hackett, you're going to take us through this part of the report. Yeah, but thank, thanks, Chair. Um, absolutely wonderful news, as, as ever. Um, another business festival, obviously, will let us build on the success of the previous festivals. Events like this can put our city, and does put our city, obviously, on the world stage. I welcome the fresh up the festival theme. And we are looking for something that has the greatest potential to engage local people and businesses, whilst also bringing businesses from across the globe. As I say, it puts us on the global stage. It is a fantastic event, and it's great for businesses here in the Merseyside region. And brings investments, as we've seen over the years. Uh, and I've also, just to finish, Chair, encouraged the festival team to be as ambitious, ambitious as possible as they prepare for the festival. And Mayor Anderson has been pivotal in the previous carnations of um, 2014, 16, and 18. Um, Mark, do you just want to update us on some of the impact of the last International Business Festival? Thanks, Chair. Yes, just in, just in brief, I'll pick out some of the highlights of the of the previous editions of the Business Festival. So, 28,000 delegates in 2014 attended the festival. In 2016, we had 98 overseas delegates, so people coming from across the world to attend the festival in Liverpool. And in 2018, we had significant delegations from China, India, and the United States, and that complemented, uh, in no small part, a focus on youth engagement, the next generation element of the business festival. It's grown from strength to strength, obviously. Uh, can we agree the recommendations set out on page 99, please? Uh, item 9 is um, high speed, and we know about the, uh, what's happening with high speed, but this is the phase 2B route refining consultation uh, response. And um, the transport infrastructure that we're talking about, HS2, is absolutely key to our economic success. Better north, south, as well as west, east connectivity will boost the Liverpool city region's economy, reduce journey times, 
but more importantly for me and I think for many of us here, it will increase freight capacity taking 150 HGV, 150 million HGV miles off our roads and motorways and as a city of seat, uh, region of long um, lobby government to ensure that we can benefit from investment in high speed rail both through the connection to HS2 and that west east connectivity sometimes called Northern Powerhouse Rail, Crossrail for the North, it doesn't matter what we call it but we want it and we want the leg from Liverpool to Manchester which currently has the best business case to be considered. And government have appeared to have agreed to everything that we've been asking for with the connection to HS2, um, a brand new twin track rail line and a new station in the Liverpool city centre. All, they've all been included in Transport for the North, £70 billion strategic transport plan. Um, I am the representative that sits on uh, Transport for the North and it's been quite clear that we've spoken as six local authorities with one voice on this. This is something that we believe is integral to the future um, um, prospects of our economic success as a city region. And um, the potential city region and business case for NPR has been predicated on HS2 happening. So um, we, we've heard the noises off in London. We know there's a, a review going on. Um, we are part of that review as a city region. Um, but what I would say is that London didn't have to choose between Crossrail and HS2. They got both. And the North shouldn't have to choose between HS2 and Northern Powerhouse Rail. We should get both. If the government are really serious about rebalancing the economy, um, we need infrastructure and investment that at least matches what's happening in London. They get £601 per person more than we currently do. And that is a national disgrace. And we just want our fair share of funding in the North. Um, so if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to take them also with the team will. Um, Jane? Thanks, uh, thanks, Steve. Just a question around what your take is and the advice you're getting around the new government approach. I thought I heard the new Chancellor refer to the so-called Northern Powerhouse. And I thought, in amongst all of the rest of the things that he was saying, that stuck out as being a bit of an odd thing. And is there any, what confidence do you have that there hasn't been uh, further turning away from, if you like, if I can, if I can make as strong a statement as that, from this whole concept, because these two economic investments are, as you say, really important. Uh, I think many of us, um, and certainly Mayor Anson was the uh, the previous representative on uh, Transport for the North, we, we've wrestled with the so-called Northern Powerhouse. We want it to work, but it has to be more than an abstract construct um, dreamt up by a former Chancellor. It has to leave, live and breathe and do something. And that's where I think TFN has been pivotal to try and breathe some life into um, Northern Powerhouse as, a, as a, more than a concept. We've quite clearly said to government that we needed certain things for to future-proof the rail infrastructure. So we got them touch points, £600 million, don't forget. So, but we got them, we got them guaranteed. It's the government that have now apparently gone cold on HS2. And I think that's because, in all honesty, the new Prime Minister wants to uh, look at areas where he can draw back funding so he can give some sweeties away in bribes. It should be a, a snap election. So. We're very cognizant of, of what we need here and we're making representatives, representation to government at every single level, including the Treasury, to say this, this is not a choice. The Northern economy in a post-Brexit world will be even more important to the UK's future. Um, why wouldn't you try to rebalance it? Why wouldn't you give a Northern port, Liverpool, Seaport, on, on the, the west of the country, if there's likely to be transatlantic trade deals, and who knows, but if there are, well, where are they going to happen? Surely it'll be here. So we need that infrastructure investment to ensure that if 
we, the port does take off as we all want it to, but that we can get that freight onto rail as it's on, onto the roads, and um, with all the, the problems of air pollution and everything else that that um, causes to our city region. Honestly, Jane, I can tell you that at every single level, we've actually got requests in now with all of the new cabinet. Um, have a long that lasts, but we're, we're getting down there, but we're not just doing that. We're talking to the civil service because at least the permanent civil service will be there no matter how they change the, uh, the ships on the Titanic, uh, the, uh, the shares on the, uh, the ship in the Titanic. Um, can we agree the recommendations set out on page 103 then, please? Uh, item 10 is um, the report approves to grant a sublease at the 11th floor in this building to the Homes and Community Agency and John will we can take us through this. This is because this forms part of our constitution in case any members are thinking why has this come to this uh, August body. It is something that um, needs to, to happen as part of that constitutional uh, requirement. But we are looking to see whether some of this housekeeping in the future might be better to go to elsewhere within the combined authority structures. So we're going to do some tidying up on the constitution in the future. Um, John. Yeah, so again, um, apologies that this has to be presented here. The detail is very dry and it's quite procedural, but um, I'm sure you'd agree that beyond that, it is very positive that Homs England have chosen to relocate more and more of their staff to, to Liverpool. Um, it's cementing of relationships is only going to be a benefit to the city region and it's going to help us both parties to deliver hopefully really good projects in this part of the, uh, in the city region. If there's any questions on it, I'll try and answer as best I can. <laughs> it's very dry, isn't it? It, it? it is a good news story though, Joe, isn't it? You know, the, the fact is that we'll have all of that expertise based here and when local authorities are talking about developing some of their housing um, projects, you can come and speak to a person instead of a, down the phone or to a faceless bureaucrat uh, somewhere else. So I think that's a really good news story for us. By the way, nothing I've called everybody works in the uh, Homes and Community Day, former Homes and Community Day, to see um, the... Um, uh, yeah, I'm not called men. I'm not in any way confirmed that anybody on the 12th floor of this building has a faceless bureaucrat. <laughs> I've clarified and took myself uh, into that one. Uh, can we include the recommendation set out on page 113, please? 11 um, is uh, our final report and it's looking to establish an urban development fund uh, and seek the approval to appoint a fund advisor to that fund. Uh, and Mark's going to take us briefly through that report. Thank you, Chair. Following a competitive process, the combined authority has selected a preferred bidder to advise the new £26 million property and low carbon uh, fund for the city region, or development fund for the city region. The preferred bidder is uh, a consortium led by the Igloo Regeneration uh, Partnership, which is, which is the manager also of the original fund, the Chrysalis Fund, uh, and the, 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 the report seeks authority to um, complete negotiations to that point there. Thank you. Any questions to Mark on that? Um, can we therefore agree that recommendation set out on page one, two, three of the report, please? Agreed, agreed. Um, is here? Um, okay, we've got uh, one question for public question time. Okay, uh, Jill will read the question out. Thank you. Um, the question acknowledges that there's been a recent declaration of the climate emergency and the commitments uh, and the ambition that's been made in relation to net zero carbon emissions by 2040. With that in mind, the questioner asks um, for uh, confirmation of the position that the um, combined authority will take in relation to the International Business Festival and those who are attending, where they are companies who may profit from the exploration or extraction or refinement of fossil fuels. Um, we will provide a full written response to Councillor Crone's um, question, but I think I'm proud and everybody here that is rightly proud that our city region is at the vanguard of not just recognising and declaring national climate emergency, but in taking significant steps in, um, I suppose, most crucial 
issue of our age. Uh, we were the first combined authority to declare a former cloud of plants and agency, and we invited people, remember, young people, into this chamber to address the combined authority meeting to explain their concerns and what a fantastic job they did do with that. But regarding the International Business Festival itself, um, all companies wishing to take part in the festival as partners or as exhibitors will be subject to checks to confirm their suitability. We want ethical businesses to be part of an ethical event. And these checks um, will these checks will not be extended to the companies merely wishing to attend the business festival um, because ethical businesses and those with alternative business models will be positively welcomed to the city region. Look, I, I do get the question that, and I know uh, why it's being posed, um, this event will be about promoting renewables and about uh, promoting ethical businesses across the city region and internationally and globally. Um, we've got a proud record of what we're doing here, and um, I will make our response to Councillor Crone's uh, question available on our website. Uh, I think we might be able to tease out just how much we're actually doing that we often fail to get credit for when certain <coughs> people pose questions in the way it's been posed. Um, I'll leave it at that, and um, there are no further questions uh, on that particular. Um, section of the, the meeting. 13 is petitions and statements and we haven't had any petitions or statement, statements. Uh, 14 is for noting that the, the minutes of the overview and scrutiny committee that were held on the 6th of March 2019 and also item 15 is confirming the minutes of the quarterly meeting of the audit and governance committee meeting held on the 20th March 20th of March 2019. Uh, they're just for noting that they noted. Yeah, thank you for me. Yeah, the next meeting, therefore, of the Command Authority will take place on Friday, 4th of October 2019, 1 o'clock in this chamber. Uh, and I thank you all for your attendance.